Hey guys, and welcome to my presentation on the biosynthesis of opioids. So an example of an opioid here is morphine, which is the structure shown below. So let's get going. So the poppy plant. So the poppy plant is called Papaver somniferum, probably mispronouncing that. And this is actually the, the major source of opioids from poppy plants. However, there are cultivars that do not produce opioids. Um, but generally, the poppy plant is thought to be native to eastern Mediterranean region. However, it's cultivated in pretty much everywhere it can be cultivated because of its obvious, obvious value. Uh, and its use actually documents back to as early as 1500 BC um, for its medicinal purposes. So, on to the structure. Uh, opioids in question here are the benzyl isoquinoline alkaloids, and their main building block, as we will go into, is in fact the uh, amino acid tyrosine, which has an aromatic side chain. To make amino acids like tyrosine that are, have aromatic side chains, plants use the shikimate pathway, which occurs mostly in chloroplasts. And it starts off using PEP from glycolysis or phosphenopyruvate and urethros for phosphate from photosynthesis. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole thing here, as that's kind of a video by itself and there has been many videos on the shikimate pathway. But I thought I'd just kind of give a brief overview. And initially with this first arrow, it involves the creation of a seven carbon sugar, which then cyclizes and is converted into a carbon only ring. Now I think this conversion to a carbon only ring is quite a cool step, so I put a little lightning beside it, which means we'll be going back to it later to look at what kind of chemistry is going on here. Then there's a bunch of like dehydrations and later on, as shown here, there is addition of a PEP, which is circled there. And this all helps form um, the kind of aromatic side chain. There's actually another cool chemistry step here, where this PEP moiety is moved from the kind of the bottom of the molecule here, all the way up uh, in uh, preferenate to the right of the molecule. And that's another step that I'm going to look back over. And then finally, with some action of some dehydrogenases and some transaminases, we eventually get to tyrosine. But how do we get from tyrosine to salutaridine, which is pretty close to kind of the final steps in the synthesis pathway? Well, first the plant needs to convert tyrosine to dopamine, and with a bit of hydroxylation and decarboxylation, this is achieved. From here, there is then condensation of this dopamine molecule with actually a precursor in the tyrosine synthesis pathway to form nocochlorin. Uh, then through a series of methylations on the hydroxyl groups towards the left of the molecule and an s to r conversion through a planar intermediate, nocochlorin is then transformed into R-reticuline. Then there's a very cool step involving a cytochrome P450 that I'm going to go back into later to form this salutaridine that has that cool bridge structure uh, shown there. And finally, the last few steps to make morphine. So starting from salutaridine in the top left, you then have a reduction and acetylation of this ketone group at the very bottom of the molecule. There is then nucleophilic attack by a hydroxyl. You can see it's kind of part of the top of the three rings and that forms a bridging oxygen, which will then displace the acetate uh, to form thebane. Morphine can then be formed from thebane in like a couple of steps involving a reduction of the bottom ring. And uh, interestingly, heroin is actually very similar in structure to morphine. In fact, the only difference is there's two acetal groups on the hydroxyl that are circled just there. And this acetylation increases cell membrane permeability. And there you have it, that's a whistle-stop tour of how some opioids are made in plants. On to the first part of the cool chemistry section of this video, we're looking at the formation of a carbon-only ring. This is in part of an early step in aromatic amino acid biosynthesis, and the enzyme we're looking at specifically is 3-dehydroquinate synthase, or DHQS, that converts the 7-carbon sugar at the top, DAHP, to this molecule at the bottom dehydroquinate, hence the name. So what's the mechanism? Well, here are some lovely arrow pushing drawings. And if we just start on the left, we can see you've got oxidation to a ketone group. And then we also have the uh, 
unsaturation of this bond here to release a good leaving group in phosphate. Now towards the center, we have oxidation of a hydroxyl group to a ketone group again. This time we end up breaking the sugar ring and this group in the third part of the diagram can then swivel around and then you could physically attack that ketone group, thus completing a carbon only ring. So the reason I chose this intramolecular aldol condensation reaction is I thought it was a cool way to form a carbon only ring with like the breaking and the swiveling and then the attacking from the different end. The next interesting reaction was also at the uh, point of aromatic amino acid biosynthesis. Uh, here it's chorismate mutase, and it's trying to move that PEP group at the bottom of chorismate towards the right into a structure that looks a lot more like uh, the amino acid tyrosine. So, how does it do it? Well, it promotes this mechanism called a Clayson uh, rearrangement here, and it's kind of like a cyclic motion of electrons where bonds are formed and bonds are broken, and it allows kind of the total almost rotation of this group from the bottom to the right. So I thought that was pretty, pretty cool. On to the final cool chemistry point is making that bridge, which is by the cytochrome P450 enzyme, salutaridine synthase. So to make this a little easier to visualize, in the intermediate step, I've kind of changed the representation of reticulin here. And this has been allowed by the flexibility of the nitrogen containing ring, because there's not really any double bonds here in that system. And uh, from here, you can see that there are actually two radical reactions that are initiated, one towards the left of the double arrows and one towards the bottom of the molecule. Now, these are both initiated by ion centers within the enzyme. And these electronic rearrangements, if you kind of follow them through, uh, allow the carbon-carbon bond to form across the very center of that picture there to form that bridge. So uh, that was pretty cool. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the secondary metabolism and the bit of organic chemistry there. See my references in the description, which will go through kind of heterologous expression of some of these enzymes in different hosts to try and increase the production uh, of these very useful drugs.